I'll tell you, there's one thing that Christians do have is we have hope. And we have a lot of hope. We should have a lot of hope. Because everything is not by chance. There are some people who live their life, they think that everything is just by chance. They don't realize that, um, that there is a Creator. They don't have that hope that there is a Creator. That there is a Creator God that was involved in the very beginning of the universe. In Genesis, we read about the beginnings of time. We read about God. We read about everything as it was, which was nothing except for God. And we're going to look at the days of creation today, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through Genesis chapter 2, verse 3, as we go through the book of Genesis. My plans are we'll be doing this through maybe October or November with a couple of detours. Sometimes we'll have a special emphasis on one Sunday. But as we went through Daniel last year, I would like to see us be able to go through the book of Genesis this year. And I wanted to start out by looking at Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. First of all, looking at the first five verses of the creation narrative. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. On this first day of creation when nothing existed. Light and darkness are divided. And we see God's creative word in this passage. God spoke and it happened. He saw it and it was good. And we see this over and over in Genesis chapter 1 that the original creation was good and there was no death until there was sin. And so there are those that like to argue that there are millions and millions of years of animals that died before man was creation, was created. And that flies in the face of number one, the creation count as it's given. If you believe that, you just don't believe the Bible. And number two, the fact that sin caused death to begin with. So sin is the cause of death. And some people uh, make the point in this creative process when they get a little bit mixed up about the days of creation that in, in verse 3 and in verse 14, God did work to make light which was there, already there, and already created visible. And that's a, that's a way you can look at it too. But either way, God created the universe as it's indicated here. And what you'll notice at the end of these verses is the following. And evening and morning, what does that mean? That means 24 hours. That does not mean a day is to the Lord is a million years. None of that. It is 24 hours. All right? Day number two, verses six to eight. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so, and God called the firmament heaven, so the evening and the morning were the second day. So, the second day of creation. It ends with vapor above and water below. And at this point, a mist, a mist would water the earth. There was no rain. That's part of the reason why people thought Noah was out of his mind when he created this large boat that was going to float and the rain was going to come. What you notice here in verse 8, an evening and morning, 24 hours. Day number 3, land, sea, and plant life. Verses 9 to 13. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together in one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then he said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was good. And it was so. Pardon me. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed according to its kind, 
and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. So, land, sea, plant life were all created on this day. These things were created after their kind. Later, when Noah put animals on the ark, he put animals on the ark after their kind. So, were there millions of species? No. From two cats came all house cats, lions, tigers, cheetahs. From two dogs came all wolves, coyotes, dobermans, dalmatians. That's the kind, and it was the same with the animal of the plant life. Two snakes, all snakes. So you don't have to have two house cats, two lions, two tigers. It doesn't work that way. And evening and morning, 24 hours. We move to day four. The sun, the moon, and the stars. Verses 14 and 19. And notice that this uh, is getting just more exciting as you move along. It's, it, it's, it's coming to a point where you're seeing God's majesty and His power as He creates things that appear maybe small, like a little animal or something, right now to the larger parts of the universe. Then God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to the divide the day from the night. Let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth. And it was so. Then God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. So more light becomes visible. In verse 16, God made the sun, the moon, and the stars. Apparently all of the heavenly bodies were made at this time. And evening and morning... 24 hours. We move on to day 5, verses 20 to 23. Then God said, Let the waters abound with abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created great sea creatures and every living thing that moves, with which the waters abounded according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind. And God saw that it was good, and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters and the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. So evening and morning were the fifth day. And looking at the kinds, did he create two of each kind of bird? Did he create an even number, a hundred of the same kind? However it worked out, all birds came from these birds. All fish came from these fish. We see here the creation is starting to peak. We now have animals. We have land. We have, we have sea, of course, and we have air animals. The birds and the fish are created. And it's interesting because if you watch the Noah the movie video by Ray Comfort, he asked a scientist in California, he, Ray says, well, uh, where does water come from? And he says, well, there, we believe that some comets brought water into the earth, and that's how water got here. And he said, oh, is that, a, is that a theory or is that truth? He said, well, it's a theory. We don't know for sure. And then Ray proceeded to ask the man if fish came in on those comments. <laughs> to which he got very angry and put his hand in front of the camera. We see the idea of blessing being introduced here. Animals, like humans later, are supposed to multiply. God wants us to multiply. And evening and morning were 24 hours. Day six is when you see land animals and mankind and this is really when the creation is peaking. Verses 24 to 31. Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw... That it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. 
So God created man in His own image. In the image of God, He created him. Male and female, He created them. Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth. Subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, so to you it shall be food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything that he made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So in verses 24 and 5, God created every land animal according to its kind. Again, one cat, or two cats, for every lion, tiger, and house cat. Two dogs for every wolf, coyote, and doberman. Starting with verses 26 to 31, we see the crown of God's creation. Man and woman created in God's image. And we're not going to look at chapter 2 next week. We're going to actually move further into chapter 3. But there is a more specific description of the creation of man and woman. And it was not written by another author. People try to make an argument from chapter 2, verse 4, where you read, this is the history. It's a word, Toledo. It's a structure in Genesis. And they try to argue, oh, okay, well, this is another guy writing this portion after this is the history. And they take this as the history, and they say that's part of the first narrative, which it's not. It always begins a narrative. So the same author, Moses, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, tells us more about the creation of man and woman. They are created in God's image. By the way, this is certainly a sermon on its own. But we can have fellowship with God. Man and woman can have fellowship with God. We are created to have communion with God. And we read, let us make. Can I prove that as a Trinitarian reference? I cannot. But it appears to be. We've seen the Spirit of God involved in creation. In John 1.1, 1, 1, we see that Jesus is the Word of God involved in creation. God has some charges to, to the people, to mankind. He blesses them. He says, have dominion over the fish, the birds, the animals. We are stewards of the animals and we should take care of them. If you have a kid that is mean to animals, be very careful you don't have a John Wayne Gacy on your hands. If people can be very mean to little animals, that's not a good sign. And it can move on to further disrespect for people. Though animals are not the same as people. Though it is okay to eat an animal. You do not treat them badly. We are to have care for them. Be fruitful and multiply, we're told. Subdue the earth. Take care of the earth. Take care of the earth. No, I don't believe, according to the global warming folks, that if I breathe, I'm going to burn the earth up through carbon dioxide emissions. Maybe I believe differently than they do on that, but I certainly don't think we should be destroying the earth. We shouldn't be tearing it up. Also, the, the man and woman were given a vegetarian diet. There was a later allowance for meat. It's probably a good idea to stay as vegetarian as you can. Bad food cannot corrupt you, Jesus said, spiritually. Spiritually, the donut will not corrupt you. Spiritually. <laughs> but physically, God had a good idea with his original vegetarian diet, though you can't add meat to that. That was the original plan. Everything was very good. God's original creation was perfect, and evening and morning, 24 hours, God rested. The last three verses, which would be Genesis 1, 2, and 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because... In it, he rested from all his work, which God had created and made. And notice created and made were two different words here. He bara, created out of nothing, and then he arranged things as he did that. Well, what's the main point that God is making, that Moses is making through God's obvious Holy Spirit's inspiration here? I'll put it this way. God created the entire universe, earth, and everything that inhabits the earth from nothing but his word, and it was a very good creation. 
God had no clay to work with. From His Word, He spoke this entire universe and all of us into existence, and it was good. It was very good. So what would have been His goal for Israel when they read this? What would have been His goal for us today? God wanted ancient Israel, and God wants us to understand that He is the Creator. And we should take comfort in that fact. And we should distrust these modern myths concerning the creation of the world. God created us individually. He created this world with His Word. And this stuff they tell you today about there being no Creator God, that's crazy. So what truths, knowing this, what truths can we take comfort in? Well, I would say number one, that God created everything in the universe good with just His Word. He created everything in this universe good with just His Word. He did it all in six days. Six times 24 hours. And humanity is the crown of creation. So if I were to take comfort in this, I would say, you know, God created everything good with just His Word. He did it all in six days. And we are the crown of His creation. Human beings are. We're not just animals. Well, God created everything in the universe good with just His Word. In the beginning, that's the first three words in the Bible. It's the first word in the original Bible with just a little prefix on it. And it means in the beginning when nothing else existed but God. And then when John wrote his Gospel of John about Jesus Christ, he started his book out with the Greek form of this same word. In the beginning, which was two words in the Greek. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and that Word is identified in John 1.14 as one who dwelt among us, Jesus. In the beginning, no one existed but Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Spirit was over the waters. We see this allusion to the Trinity in chapter 1, verse 26 of, of Genesis. The, the Spirit of God the Father God, the Son of God. And He created everything out of nothing. That word for created means out of nothing. We can only make stuff. We cannot create stuff. You can put flour together with an egg with water and make a cake. You cannot create a cake. You can't snap your finger, say the word, and a cake come into existence. Scientists make things with a recipe of things that God created. He, Barah, creates out of nothing. But He will give the scientists the different elements to put together to make something out of things that God created. The earth was formless and void. There was an argument, actually, that the earth became formless and void because of a previous creation that had rebelled and I don't believe that's a correct translation. I think it's more theology at that point than exegesis. I really believe that God did not create a universe, destroy it, and create another one. But either way, He created a perfect universe that, from formless and voidness. In the beginning, before anything else had ever been created, the Trinitarian Creator created everything absolutely out of nothing. And what is recorded in verses 1 and 2 is preceded by nothing but God. He was the only thing, the only existence. Creation exists only because God called it into existence. Genesis 1 to 11 flies in the face of modern evolutionary thought in the academy and in the world. There are even Christians that are scared of the so called scientific evidence, that want to doubt what God writes in this book, and would even argue that Adam and Eve did not exist. It was all just a poetic story. God is very much alive and well, and not only did He create the entire universe, by just casting the stars into their places like frisbees. By the way, he created the stars also, it says. Something like that. He sustains the creation every day. He is the glue of the universe. It's one way you can look at God and Christ and Colossians sustaining the universe. I've heard it put that way. He's the glue of the universe. He holds it together. He holds it together until the consummation of this age, until the eschaton, until we are in heaven, and then beyond that, this whole world and everything will be held into existence by God in his hand. He created it all good. There's a lot of sin in the world today, and sin is the cause of death. We read in Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. And there was no sin when man and woman was first created. So death in the fossil layers before man and woman is impossible. 
You have to explain that by a global flood that rearranged the strata. Millions of years does not work. He created it with just His Word. God's Word and His Word alone is powerful. We were in Isaiah 14 this past week on Wednesday. God basically told the people that my thoughts and my purposes have power. If I think it, it's going to happen. If I purpose it, it's going to happen. Well, God creates everything good with His Word, and He did it all in six days. The pattern for each creative activity with God, if you look at this, this long passage, He said it, the command was given, the fact of the creation is stated, God evaluates it, He says it's good, and then very good. The boundaries of the created element, you see that? And then He names it. There's actually a Babylonian creation epic called the Enuma Elish. It's fanciful, but where did the story come from? Even if it was written before this was written. It came from the oral creation story. We're all related. We all come from one man and one woman. No matter what color we are, where we are from, we all spread out from one area, and ultimately after the, after the Noahic flood, the deluge, we spread out again. And stories happen because people heard the oral story of how the earth was created. Six literal days of creation is a big issue today. And people, like I said, they will even say Adam and Eve didn't exist to try to get around it. They cannot accommodate Genesis 1-11 to with any form of evolutionary theory. None. None whatsoever. The doubters of today were actually predicted. These myths that we have were predicted in 2 Peter 3, verse 3b, the second half of 3 to 5. In 2 Peter 3, scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts and saying, Where is the promise of His coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation... For this they will willfully forget that the world, that the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of water and in water, by which the world that then existed perished, being flooded with water. People will doubt the creation. People will de they will doubt the flood. They will doubt these stories that are in the Bible. They're going to doubt them. It's going to happen. We know that. Well, finally, humanity is the crown of creation. And that's the third truth that we can really take comfort in today is that humanity 